I spent three years designing a prosthetic arm for a kid who stopped showing up to therapy. The hospital finally called. He'd passed away a week before the prototype arrived. I'm a biomedical engineer. Not the glamorous kind I work in a tiny lab retrofitting old prosthetics for kids whose insurance won't cover the new ones. Three years ago, I met Marcus. Eight years old, lost his arm in a car accident. Bright kid, loved dinosaurs, wanted to be a paleontologist. His family couldn't afford the $40,000 prosthetic he needed. His mom worked two jobs morning shift at a diner, night shift cleaning offices. His dad had left right after the accident. Couldn't handle it, she told me quietly during our first meeting. She brought Marcus in wearing a donated prosthetic from the 90 seconds that didn't even fit properly. It was made for an adult, rattled when he moved, and the harness left marks on his shoulder. I told his mom I'd build him one, nights and weekends, on my own dime. I designed it to grow with him adjustable joints, 3D printed components I could resize. I even added little dinosaur decals he picked out himself. The first six months were the hardest. I had to learn new software, teach myself advanced 3D modeling. My day job is just basic repairs, replacing worn cables, adjusting old fittings. This was completely different. I watched YouTube tutorials at 2 a.m. I burned through three different prototypes that either broke during testing or didn't articulate correctly. Marcus came in every other Saturday. He'd sit on the exam table, swinging his legs, asking me questions about how motors work, whether we could make the fingers move fast enough to catch a baseball. His mom would bring me coffee black, two sugars, the way I mentioned I liked it once. By month nine, I had something that almost worked. The grip was too weak and the elbow joint stuck, but Marcus's face when he picked up a plastic cup for the first time made every late night worth it. I kept iterating. Version four had better sensors. Version five was lighter. Version six could handle different grip strengths, delicate enough for holding an egg, strong enough for a backpack. Marcus started talking about trying out for little league. He wanted to play first base. His mom cried when he said that. Around the two-year mark, I finally had it. The arm moved smoothly, responded to muscle sensors in his shoulder, had enough battery life for a full day. I custom painted it in his favorite colors, dark green with metallic silver accents. I added those dinosaur decals to the forearm panel. I scheduled the final fitting for a Tuesday. Marcus was supposed to come in, try it on, take it home. I'd been testing it obsessively for weeks, making sure every joint moved perfectly, every sensor calibrated right. That Monday, his mom called and canceled. Marcus had a doctor's appointment that ran long, she said. Could we reschedule for next week? I said, of course, no problem. Next week came. She canceled again. Family emergency. The week after that, she didn't call at all. I left a voicemail. Then another one. Then three more over the next month. I checked my records. They hadn't moved or changed numbers. I drove past their apartment once, saw her car in the lot, but something felt wrong about showing up unannounced. Two months passed. Then four. Then six. I told myself they must have gotten a grant I didn't know about. Maybe some charity stepped in with a professional grade prosthetic. Maybe they didn't need my scrappy DIY version anymore. I should have been happy for them, but I kept working on it anyway. I upgraded the grip strength one more time. Added a new quick release mechanism. Improved the cosmetic covering so it looked more realistic. I couldn't stop. This was Marcus's arm. I'd put three years into it. Last Tuesday, my phone rang during lunch. Unknown number. I almost didn't answer. It was the hospital. A social worker. Very gentle voice. The kind that immediately tells you something's wrong. She said Marcus had been admitted eight months ago. Cancer they didn't catch during the accident workup. Aggressive. He'd fought hard, but his body was already so weakened from the trauma. He died the week before I finished. I drove to the funeral with the prosthetic in my trunk. His mom saw me in the parking lot and just broke down. She said Marcus talked about his robot arm until the day he couldn't talk anymore. She asked if she could bury him with it.